It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's schools where we bring together outstanding elementary and middle school students and test their science literacy. Test your own and see how many of these questions you can answer today. Today, two great middle schools playing our game. Let's meet them right now. First from G. James Golson Middle School. Say hello to Jeff. Hey Jeff, nice to have you here today. Their captain is Lydia is with us. Lydia, yes, yeah, she is going to do a great job. And Fidelis is here too, also a great player. And Thomas Johnson Middle School represented by their captain, Charlene. Hey Charlene. She's been here before on our show when we were virtual during the pandemic. Rahel is back too, another virtual player. Nice to have you here today in person and Melissa also here. Hey Melissa, also nice to have you back. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game according to categories. We have six categories of questions. Let's share those categories with you now. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's Get Physical, questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions, everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, our game board is arranged according to question difficulty. Easier questions there on the left with five and ten points. Increasingly more difficult, 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. And at the end of the two rounds today, one of these two teams will come back to play Benjamin Tasker Middle School to become the fourth and final of our four semifinalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly before we start. Let's go to that red team. And Lydia, would you try that buzzer? It, yeah, it looks good. It sounds good. Good luck to this team and to Thomas Johnson. Charlene, try the green team's buzzer. A-OK -okay over there as well. Good luck to TJ. You guys, you ready to play? Let's do it. Yeah, you've been waiting a long time. We're proud of you already because your school sent you here. You're great ambassadors. We go alphabetically, so G before T. So G, James Golson. Come on, Lydia. Let's play that bowl. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, kudzu, an invasive plant that grows over the top of telephone poles and even buildings, is one of these V initial kinds of plants that requires support or creeps along the ground. Vines. Thomas Johnson. Vines. Yeah, those are vines. Kudzu, the vine that ate the south, they call it. Go green. Um, what do you want to do? Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10, please. Body system for 10? Here's your question. You are sacroiliac is the area of your body where your spine joins with this large P-initialed bone and forms a joint. Pelvis. TJ. Pelvis. It is the pelvis indeed. Thank you, Rahel, for your assist. Go, green. Um, what do you want to do? Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15. Fif physical for 15 points. Your question is as follows. Let's look at a picture. I'm going to take you to India and show you the Taj Mahal famous world landmark. The marble used to make that Taj Mahal, that mausoleum, can let some light pass through it, meaning that it is not transparent, it's not opaque, it's this. Translucent. Thomas Johnson. Translucent. It is translucent, absolutely right. Good. You're off to a fast start there, Thomas Johnson. Go again. All right, what do you want to do? Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15, please. Body systems, 15 points. Well, an underarm deodorant helps to repel the bacteria that causes stinky body odor. To actually stop your glands from producing sweat, you need to use an anti-what? Antibacteria? Say it. Bacteria? Not bacteria. Good try. 
To actually stop the gland from producing the sweat, you need an anti-what, TJ? I want to process the Rahel. Antiperspirant. Antiperspirant, absolutely right. Yeah, the perspirant part was what we needed. Good try, Lydia. You'll we'll get them next time. Go green. What do you want to do? Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10. Physical for 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. While the speed of light is a universal constant, never changes, because the composition and density of the atmosphere on some planets is involved, the speed of this other thing changes. The speed of what, Thomas Johnson? Sound. Sound, yeah, the speed of sound is variable. Good, go again. Zuprae for 10. Zuprae for 10. Zuprae for 10? Mm -hmm. Zuprae for 10 points. A decapod, D-E-C-A-P-O-D, a decapod, two-part answer, like a squid or a cuttlefish or a lobster, is so named because it has how many of what's? Ten, how many tentacles. of what's if you're a decapod, Thomas Johnson? Pass it to Rahel. Rahel. It's a decapod because it has 10 tentacles? Absolutely, 10 tentacles or 10 legs, excellent answer. Good, all right. The red team is saying, hey, what's going on over here? Our buzzer's not working. Your buzzer's working. Yeah, you guys are going to get them. Go green. Okay, science book. Science book for how much? Um, science book for 20, please. Science book for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. When something foreign enters your body, like a bacterium or a virus, that foreign body is known by this A initial term, the opposite of an antibody, COVID tests were based on the presence of these. Come on, Red. Can I pass it to Fidelis? Fidelis. Um, Say it. Go ahead. Antibody? Not, no, no, I was saying it's the opposite of an antibody. It's the opposite of an antibody. It, the COVID tests were based on the presence of these. This is a foreign body, like a virus or a bacterium. Can you give me that A initial term, Thomas Johnson? Antibacteria? Good try, an antigen, an antigen. Remember, there was an antigen test for COVID. Okay, try again, green. Uh, what do you want to do? Science potpourri for 15. Science potpourri for 15. Science potpourri for 15 points. Team, if someone swallows a poisonous substance, remember this if you're at home and a baby brother or sister swallows something that's poisonous, activated charcoal is often given since charcoal has a very large SA which means it can absorb large amounts of the poison. S-A stands for what when de describing that charcoal briquette? Charlene. Any idea? Uh, we have an idea. No idea. Nope. Red no. team, S-A. Charcoal provides a lot of S-A. Uh, we're going to pass it to Jeff. Saturation. Good try. Surface area, surface area to absorb a lot of that poison. Okay, nice try both teams. There go again, Thomas Johnson. Um, body systems for five. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. The spokes of an umbrella have what same name as these bones that form a cage around your heart and lungs. Thomas Johnson. Rib cage. Rib cage. You call them ribs. Absolutely right. That buzzer says we've come to the end of the first round. So far, it's been all Thomas Johnson. They have 125 points. G. James Golson is just raring to go in the second half. They've got 50 points right now, but I know that's going to change. We'll be back with more Science Bowl in just a moment. And it's now time to talk to our teams a little bit about themselves and their schools. Before we ask any more science questions, let's go over to G. James Golson. Lydia, nice to have G. James Golson with us today. It's been a number of years, and you guys are great representatives of the school. Tell us who your principal is. Kevin Thompson. Wonderful. And who's your coach? Dr. Howe, Ms. Dr. Howe. Yeah, Captain. we'll be out in just a few moments and uh, give uh, the coach some air time, some face time here. Did you have any alternates on your team? Yes. Who Hassan Elliott, only one. Just one, and we'll bring the alternate out as well. What do you like about G. James Golson? What's something you like to brag to people about when you tell them that you go to that school? The, the principal. Yeah, the principal, good person, huh? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's top down. If the principal's great, it just seems to make, every, make the difference all throughout the school. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the principal is, all, is a great teacher that way, too. Uh, tell me about uh, what you like to do in your spare time. I like to often read or also often play different kind of sports with friends or family yeah. or in my team. Because you play soccer, you yeah. play softball, you play, you, and you're a scholar athlete. I was tell, telling you earlier before mm -hmm. that you came on here today. Uh, what do you want to do someday, did you say? 
Um, I wanted to become a s computer scientist, but I currently do not know. But I feel like as soon as I grow up, I might learn more. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you don't know what you want to be when you grow up, even when you're grown up. You know, it sometimes take a while, it takes a while before that epiphany to hit. But find something you like and you're surprised that people will pay you to do it. Good luck in the second half. Fidel, it's nice to have you with us today. Why did you want to be on the show? Um, I wanted to be on the show because I like to study science in general. Um, I like the experiments. Um, projects, so I think this was a really good fit for me. It is a good fit. Yeah. That's a perfect way to put it. And would you like to be a scientist someday? Um, I'll think about it, but I really want to be um, a professional chef. Because oh, yeah. we were talking about that before. Yeah. You're going to serve uh, people breakfast, right? Yeah. yeah. I can taste those pancakes mm. already. I bet they're good <laughs> what you make. Yeah. Jeff, nice to have you here today. He's another athlete, scholar athlete, a soccer player. And what else do you do in your spare time, Jeff? I also like to study above uh, my grade level mathematics class. I like to study algebra and calculus. Absolutely. And you have a career already is planned out. This young man wants to take advantage of a program here in Prince George schools where you can get a high school diploma and an associate's degree from the Prince George's Community College. And after that, what are you going to do? Uh, become a pediatrician after I graduate from UMD. You got it all planned out. I like your confidence. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Good luck in the second half here. Thomas Johnson, nice to have you guys here. All had prior experience. So we're back in the studio for the first time in two and a half years. And you guys were here. We played the game virtually. And this is so much better because you're real. We can see you. And you have a team right next to you. Charlene, yeah. tell us who your principal is. Um, our principal is Dr. Campbell. She's new. And I really like her. Oh, that's nice. I'm just, she's very happy to hear that, too. And who's the coach of your team? Um, Ms. Yabez. Ms. Yabez, yes. yes. Ms. Yabez has been sending us wonderful teams for many, many years. We thank her and we thank the coach over at uh, Ms. Howe at uh, Dr. Howe at uh, G. James Golson. Tell us what you like about your school, Thomas Johnson, Charlene. Uh, so I like the PBS incentives, like it encourages us to do good and yeah, prepares us for the future. PBIS, that's positive behavior, you know, and yeah. it's rewarded and recognized as it should be. What do you want to do someday, Charlene? Um, like I said before, I'd like to be a Supreme Court Justice and focus in law, like my father. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So your father's a lawyer? Yeah, he's a lawyer. You want to follow in his footsteps? Mm -hmm. He can be around when you uh, take that oath up there at the Supreme Court someday. What a great ambition. Nice. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Melissa? Melissa wants to be a chef, among other things, yeah? What do you like to cook? I like to like try different recipes. I tried uh, a cinnamon roll pancake and it was very good. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. Would you like to have your own restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you and Fidel, you know, could get together. You know, you got uh, cooking in common here. What do you do in your spare time if you're not cooking? Um, I like to draw and I also just like to chillax and like, I don't know, just, just listen to I music. Think that's, being yeah. a kid, that's what it's all about. Enjoy these years. And Rahel, I have to ask, where do you come by all your science knowledge? You seem to know everything. I study a lot. I really like science and learning about science, and so I do a lot of research. It all pays off. It's paying off, and we're getting to see that today, and uh, we appreciate all that you're doing and that you did do to get ready for this. What do you want to do? Do you see science in your future? Uh, well, science and technology, I guess. I want to work in, I want to be an IT consultant, but I, it's not going to stop me from continuing to learn about science and especially computer science. Absolutely right. And STEAM, you know, it encompasses just about all the subjects, you know. So uh, you're, you're, you're part of the science family here. Uh, good luck in the second half. Let's get back to our questions now. 50 points for Golson, 125 for Thomas Johnson. Lots of points to give away. And Charlene, let's start us out. Let's play again. Um, let's get Zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. In the Lion King movie, Simba and Nala, if you remember, are trying to lose Zazu, the hornbill guardian, as Simba and Nala go off exploring. Simba says to Nala, let's ditch the what, referring to a bird that's long been since extinct and not very bright. The dodo. Yeah, let's ditch the dodo, yeah. And you saw what happened to them, they got in trouble. Go green. Uh, what do you want to do? Green things for 15. Green things for 15, please. Green things for 15 points. One of the greenest and most tropical places in America is this national park whose name means Sea of Grass. Thomas Johnson. Green of Grass. What you got over there? No idea. No answer? Mm -hmm. G. James Golson, 
This national park, its name means the Sea of Grass, one of the greenest, greenest and most tropical places in the United States. The Yosemite? Yes. The Yosemite? Uh, the Everglades. Oh. The Everglades, the greenest place. Good try, though. Good try. Go green. Go ahead, Charlie. Green things for five. Okay, green things for five. Green things for five points. Okay, get ready on your buzzers. You all know this one. Cinderella got to the ball after her fairy godmother turned one of these types of squash into a carriage. Pumpkin. The pumpkin is right. You got to ring the bell first. You got to ring the bell first. All right, give five points to Thomas Johnson. Okay, hey, Jeff, you stay on Lydia there. You, you, sometimes everybody grabs the buzzer at the same time. Sometimes that's a, a ploy. Whatever you prefer. Go green. Five. Dateline. Okay. Dateline for five. Dateline for five points. Teams, here's the question. The movie The Imitation Game, all about the successful breaking of the Nazi, Nazi code during World War II, involves something called the Enigma machine. One of the very first instances of machine that could implement instructions, or more simply, one of these that we use all the time. Computer. computer. Yes, indeed, Charlene. It was one of the first computers. Absolutely right. And I love your enthusiasm. Just wait till I recognize you so the director can get his shot. Thanks, Charlene. You're playing a good game. Go ahead. Um, physical for five. Physical for five. Physical. Let's get physical for five points. All right. It's time, New Olson. It's time for you to get one. Here we go. Well, there are moons all over the solar system. Some of them are no more than captured asteroids. There are two planets. They have no moons at all. Name them both. Neptune, Neptune and Uranus. Ooh, not Neptune and Uranus. Good try. The two planets that have no moons at all. Come on, Golson. Pluto and Jupiter. Oh, no, 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 no. Mercury and Venus. Mercury and Venus, the two closest to the sun, don't have any moons. We have one, Mars has two, and then the other planets have many, many, many. And, you know, unfortunately, Lydia, Pluto, I feel bad. It got kicked out of the planet club. You know, it's not around anymore, you know. Didn't pay its dues. Go ahead, green. Science potpourri for 10. Science potpourri for 10 points. Here's your question. Someone experiencing ADHD, attention deficit what disorder? The H refers to hyper what? Hyperactive. Hyperactive. Oh, hyperactive is right. Thank you, Thomas Johnson. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Yes, indeed. All right, go again, Green. Dateline for 10. Dateline, 10 points. Here's your question, multiple choice. The choices are long, but the question is rather simple. Listen carefully. Scientists now say that the tiny arms of the Tyrannosaurus rex, you know how tiny they are? Which might have gotten bitten off when many rexes were feeding on a carcass, kept over the years getting smaller and smaller and became virtually useless. Such a body part that has outlived its usefulness, like our own appendix, is known as which of the following? Ves tailbone? I'm sorry? The tailbone? No, let me listen. Here are the choices. Which of these choices now? describes a body part that has outlived its usefulness. Vestigial, extraneous, or supernumerary? Vestigial. Wait, pass it to Vestigial. Vestigial is absolutely correct. Yes, indeed. Yeah, whenever I say multiple choice, just wait for the choice. I appreciate you jumping in there. You got to do that, you know, because you want to get some points on the board. All right, TJ, go. Um, size puppy for five. Popri, five points. Here's your question, teams. There are supermoons that occur every year, full moons that are very close to the Earth. One of the supermoons last year was named for these invertebrates that appear in the spring when the soil starts to soften and they come up. Worms. Oh, worms. Worms, yeah, they call it the earthworm moon. Good, go. Dateline 15. Dateline 15. Dateline, 15 points, multiple choice, multiple choice, listen. A recent issue in a science journal called Vertebrate Paleontology, that's the name of the journal, Vertebrate Paleontology, there was an article about which of the following? An ancient relative of the giant panda, the discovery of a new species of tree snail, or the large wingspan span of an extinct dragonfly. The panda, the snail, the dragonfly. Which one? Thomas Johnson. Panda. 
The panda. The panda, because it said an ancient relative of the panda, and it, it said vertebrate paleontology, the only creature there that had a backbone. Good thinking. Good answer. Go. Zuprate for 15. Zuprate for 15. Zuprate for 15 points. Teams, your question is as follows. There was a pitcher who played for the Los Angeles Dodgers by the name of Sandy Koufax, and he was about to pitch a perfect game. No runs, no hits, no errors. And the announcer up in the booth, he said that the stadium was so nervous, everyone was anxious. He said, there are 29,000 people in this ballpark, and a million of these insects often felt to be moving in our stomachs when we get nervous. Butterflies. Yes, oh, yes, yes, all right, finally. That's why I got a good going red. Go. Um, green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. All right, let's go for two in a row here. Multiple choice. Trees that are leaning aren't necessarily dying, since they're leaning toward the light, which is a natural tendency to get more sunlight. Is that tendency to lean toward the light known as, which of these three? Phototropism. 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 It is phototropism, yeah. Rahel says, I don't need any more. It's not photoperiodism, it's not photolysis. Good, green. You up to 200 points. Go, TJ. Huh? Physical for 20. Physical for 20 points is as follows here. OK, let's get physical for 20 points. If a heart attack occurs, someone should quickly take an aspirin because it can also prevent the, it can prevent the person from dying because it keeps these P-initialed factors in the blood from clumping together. What are those things called, Thomas Johnson? Pass it to Rahel. Platelets? They are platelets. You got it. All that science work you do is paying off. Platelets indeed, yes. And those clumping platelets could clog up those arteries, which could indeed cause the heart attack victim to perish. Keep that in mind. Good. Green. Dateline for 20. Dateline for 20. Dateline for 20 points. To protect students like you guys against the effects of any new coronaviruses, our schools are now upgrading their HVAC systems, HVAC. Heating, air conditioning. What does the V stand for? Ventilation. Ventilation. Ventilation, absolutely right. Get that air moving. Open up those windows. Good, go. What do you want? Zuperade for 20. Zuperade for 20 points. Question is as follows. Since alligators, unlike crocodiles, don't have a special gland to remove excess amounts of this substance, they can't travel north by swimming in the ocean. They don't, they Thomas can't Johnson. Pass to Rahel. They can't cry to remove salt. They can't cry, which is in the ocean, right? Since the ocean is, is uh, so saline, high salinity, they can't get rid of it. Absolutely. Good. Go. All right, we've got all the 25 pointers left, a couple 20s. Our, our time is winding down here. Let's get another couple here, Golson. Okay, go Charlene. What do you want to do? Try body systems. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. When you're asleep, your brain still recognizes sounds. But sound waves named for these first two letters of the Greek alphabet don't make it to the parts of the brain that are active during yeah. the day. Alpha and beta. Thomas Johnson. Well. Alpha and beta. Alpha and beta, the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. Absolutely correct. And those are the sound waves that uh, don't make it. They don't make it. All right. The buzzer is rung, and it looks like Thomas Johnson is today's victor. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for being with us today. Boy, it was all Thomas Johnson today, but that was a team that had lots of experience. We have not seen the G. James Golson School in many, many years, but, you know, they never gave up. I love their sportsmanship. They are great students. They, all the students here, are deserving of our praise. Let's have a nice round of applause for everybody today. Our final score is Thomas Johnson, 280, and G. James Golson, 65. Charlene, would you be good enough to introduce your coach? Uh, this is Ms. Yabez, our coach.
The one and only Miss Yabez, thank you for all the work you've done over the years. And Lydia, would you introduce your coach and your alternate, please? This is my. This is our coach, Miss Dr. Howe. Yes. And this is our alternate, Dasan Elliott. Nice round of applause for both teams again. And clap for yourselves at home, too. Thank you for being part of Science Bowl today. We hope you learned a few things. And we hope also that you share our pride in these students because they are Prince George's best. Till next time, I'm Dave Zarin. See you next time on the Science Bowl. Bye-bye.